I am James A. Lofts. I left the big city to build an off-grid homestead on 40 acres of Canadian wilderness. This area of Ontario has giant ridgelines, deep valleys, and pure rivers. Black bears, gray wolves, mountain lions, moose, and many forest spirits share the land. I started in November 2023. Starting with a modest 12 by 16 foot guest cabin, my goal is to build such a glorious homestead that I attract a magnificent wife, have 10 babies, and raise an Irish wolfhound. Welcome to Wild Homestead. Gosh dang, that looks a lot better. It's always been so messy out here. It just look, looks, looks a lot more uh, organized. Start to this week. So Sunday night, I started feeling sick. And I woke up in the middle of the night and uh, just exploding out of both ends, for lack of a better term. I'm pretty sure it was food poisoning. For about 24 hours straight, I just felt... Uh, incomprehensibly ill <laughs> just bursting out of both ends i i managed to get into the nearest city and check into a roadside motel i just needed like a sink and a shower and uh, a toilet because man i almost made an absolute disastrous mess of this tent and my sleeping bag uh but not quite so anyways i stumbled in in the early hours of the morning and uh, I spent two nights there and I kind of recovered. I'm back out here in the tent and uh, I still feel weak. I think the worst of it's gone. That first, that basically 24 hour stretch um, was absolutely brutal. It's now Sunday morning. I'm actually feeling pretty normal. I just had my, not to give TMI, my first normal uh, bowel movement since <laughs> probably I got food poisoning on Monday morning. And it's now Sunday morning. Um, just horrible leg cramps. Couldn't fall asleep. Um, thankfully, I have some magnesium supplements that I've been taking. And I don't know if that's what's working, but finally my gut no longer is rumbling. My intestines don't feel inflamed anymore. And I kind of, I'm not getting any leg cramps, you know, so far this morning. I just feel kind of normal. Knock on wood. So I'm actually going to try to, you know, try to start getting the material that I have for my roof. It's out in the road. I'm going to start bringing that back. So I've got about, um, most of my roof is going to be made out of two by eights and I've got these 12 foot sections and I've got about uh, close to 40 of them. And then I've got some two by sixes and two by fours in there as well to make up some of the other, uh, you know, roof components. But, um, you know, I thought about different ways to get these back. I think the best way is to just, just huff them. I ended up getting the biggest cart for my ATV, like kind of trailer cart in town, the closest town. And uh, it's still not nearly big enough to carry these 12 foot sections.
Yeah, so from about 3 o'clock onwards, maybe 2.30, I had a call from one of my neighbors up the river. And up here, you know, everybody's living on 40, 60, 80, 200 acre plots, right? But anyways, this neighbor up the river, this great family, they're having some, call it rural political problems with one of their neighbors who is a real, a real rotten apple. And sometimes in the country, what I'm learning, you know, we're 45 minutes away from the nearest police station. Um, sometimes if you got a rotten apple in the community, you just got to have strength in numbers and confront that rotten apple. So for a big city, downtown of a big city guy, having grown up in, you know, Toronto and Los Angeles and lived in Beijing, China for seven years, it's very interesting learning the dynamics of a remote rural area because it's almost like there's a bit of vigilante justice out here, right? Good morning, everybody. The sun just rose. It's about uh, 7.15 and uh, headed into town. There's a few critical pieces of supply I need. Just drinking this maple water from you, maple trees on your own land makes everything worth it. Even if it's just this, everything, leaving the city, all the struggle, drinking this pure, pure maple water makes everything worth it. How is this the first time that I'm making bacon? This is frickin' delicious. So many folks on my Instagram, you know, I was sick last week. They said, hey man, like make sure you're taking some supplements out there. But yes, I have been taking supplements. You know, the first thing I've been taking daily is uh, omega-3 supplement, uh, DHA and EPA. Second thing, I've just ran out of it, a beef liver supplement. There's a bunch of different brands out there. I've kind of switched back and forth between one. I was taking a multivitamin as well and I was about to reorder it, but thankfully there was this company called AG1 that reached out uh, and sent me some samples of this multivitamin probiotic mineral uh, supplement and I've been taking it for the past three weeks and I feel fantastic. 
It tastes great. You just take one scoop per day in the morning in cold water. They are the sponsor of today's video. It tastes like, I would say, a mix between pineapple and vanilla bean. It's just comprehensive foundational nutrition. You take this one thing, it should probably cover all of your bases. It's going to be supporting your gut. It's going to be supporting your immune system. They have very high manufacturing standards. It's NSF certified, so you can use it in professional sport. You go to drinkag1.com slash wildhomestead, or you click the QR code on the screen here. There's also a link in the description of this video. You can go and when you're ordering your first month's supply, uh, which I got, they will send you this free bottle to store it in because you have to refrigerate it after opening. Um, they will give you this nice little scooper. They'll give you a shaker bottle. They will give you this uh, five pack of travel packs of AG1. And then they will also give you a year's supply of vitamin D3 and K2 in liquid form with this little dropper. So check it out, guys. Uh, drinkag1.com slash wildhomestead. And uh, I wouldn't be recommending it to you unless I used it myself for three weeks. I like it, and I'm going to continue using it. So check it out. Shrikes. Oh, oh, doing one uh, eight by four, three quarter inch plywood board to start with. This cart is working amazing. I don't know if you guys remember, but maybe two or three episodes ago, I brought in six sheets um, and I was just carrying them on top of my head. And that was fine. It was very difficult and it was extremely strenuous on my neck. I'm kind of surprised I didn't injure, injure myself. So this is why I got this cart. It's working out quite well, but I've got 16 of these guys. Oh my God. And I'm back. It's only 8.45, holy Lord. That's what happens when you leave at 6.05. I was on the road at 6.05, woke up at 5.55, and uh, back in time with a full day ahead of me.
Ravens of Odin. Or crows, preferably ravens. Man, those screws are a lot easier than nails. And man, look how, this is probably the nicest one I've done. of Odin headed north an excellent omen There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Last beam installed up here. Um, then we got to put on the uh, the plywood. This plywood, thankfully, stayed nice and dry because I really, you know, made sure to uh, get that uh, tarp down really secure um, as I've been sick for the past week and it's been raining and snowing and whatnot. It's starting to rain again right now. Very good timing. I was going to try to put on the plywood, but we'll wait till tomorrow. The hills are alive with the sound of music. Ooga booga. Holy Lord and Redeemer, ladies and gentlemen, it's coming down. It's absolutely coming down. Boy, look at that. The tarp did not survive on top of the new beams. Ha, huh. big winds last night. 
at least the uh, the critical thing is is that all that plywood is still covered. Um, but this is really super wet snow that's going on top of here right now. Hmm. What a miracle! It stopped. The snowstorm has stopped. Uh-oh. Too much chalk. Too much. Dang, ladies and gentlemen, this is a big, this is a big area. That's a big, that's a big loft. Hooey.
Okay, so just ate dinner and uh, we got this uh, top plate done on this side. Now we're gonna go over the other side and do the other one. So um, the other wall is about two inches shorter than this one. So I just wanna do this to make this top plate that A, it's gonna be easy to put my hurricane ties down into. And uh, also it'll make it a uniform distance and uh, level when putting the rafters from the top to these uh, eaves beams. It should make that process easier. Uh -oh. Hmm. Gosh dang, old man winter. He's still here. He's like, you thought I was gone. No, son. I'm still here. My hands are frozen, these gloves. I gotta go put on my big heavy duty winter gloves. They're the only ones I have that aren't wet from today. But uh, old man winter, much respect to you, good sir. Yep, so just as I suspected, that wall, the other wall, is two and a half inches shorter um, than this one. So we're going to start off with a block at the very front of two and a half inches. And then as you go to the back, this one needed about three inches at the back. So this one's going to be about five inches at the back. That's And then they're going to be uh, even and all of this, you're not gonna see it, right? Because the overhang, my rafters go out two horizontal feet. So they're, you know, whatever, two and a half, almost three feet long. Um, so all of that's gonna be covered. And the last, you know, I think pro of doing it this way, there's gonna be another layer of two by fours on top of here. It's gonna give me a bit of a knee wall um, for the loft, which is nice. I mean. Even like this much extra space will be really nice up there um, because there's, you know, not a huge amount of room to begin with. Ah! Ladies and gentlemen, exhibit A. These are all rabbit tracks all around here, right? Look where the rabbit stood up and chowed down right on Thor's red oak. We need to get this guy protected because these rabbits could easily... I mean, at this size, a single rabbit could take out Thor's red oak, let alone if you have a white-tailed deer or a moose come by, it, it, in seconds, it could completely destroy this tree. So that's literally priority number one, chicken wire and somehow getting uh, that guy protected.
Okay, so there we have it. We've got the top plate on, uh, on both sides. And um, I gotta put one more layer of two by fours on the top. Now that it's level front to back, as well as the north wall here and the south wall are both level. You just saw me checking the level with a, with a 16 foot uh, two by eight there. That's great. Um, now this is gonna be covered up by the rafters, right? The rafters are gonna be hanging over this. And I'm likely, what I'm thinking now is to cover this up. Um, I'm probably gonna take a raw log and cut it in half and use that as kind of a fascia board to cover over that whole gap. So it also looks natural, you know, to stick with the, uh, the raw log aesthetic. I mean, you're not gonna see it anyways, but just to plug the hole um, and then putting, you know, insulation probably in behind it, um, I think that'll work well. But I'm really glad that I did this. It was a lot of extra work, but now when I'm going to cut my rafters, it's gonna be a very standardized and level um, distance calculation between the rafter, uh, sorry, between the eaves beam and then the ridge beam. Because on top of the ridge beam, what we have to do next as well, and I think this is gonna be quite tricky, is getting a two by eight ridge board sitting directly on top of that ridge beam. And then um, I'll be able to, should be able to cut all my rafters from the same uh, basically measurement. Because with the raw logs, as far as I can tell, you'd have to go, because it's going to be slightly uneven as you go, you're going to be having to cut each, you know, rafter uh, to a custom dimension. Wow, I really think I lucked out here. So what it's kind of computing out to is that uh, it's 12 feet wide to the outside of um, our top plates. And um, once I get the two by eight on top of here, look at that view. <laughs> uh, once I get the two by eight on top of here, it's gonna be almost exactly uh, six feet tall from the top of those plates. So, that's exactly that. That's like a 12 by 12. There's going to be 12 inches of rise for 12 inches of run. I think I got to put a shim or two in here to get this thing even level rather. And then once this is level, install the, uh, the, uh, two by eight on top of here.
So that's pretty much level, uh, you know, right in the middle. Because there is a slight curvature to this uh, ridge beam. And I put the curve up, bow it up. Um, when you get to that end, it's slightly, right? It's slightly this way. And when you get to this end, it's slightly that way. It's still pretty straight. But um, if I tinker any higher on this end, then uh, that end is going to start to go down. So I think I'm going to leave it here. This is looking very nice. Tapped in. I just forgot to film it. So I just marked out where each rafter is going to go, 16 inches on center, so I can determine where I can put the rest of my brackets so that they do not interfere with the rafters uh, hitting the uh, headboard. Perfect. Hot damn Vietnam. What a wild week. My Lord. Looking at the uh, the cabin, I think the first thing we need to look at is all this materiel. This took forever. I'd used my GPS mapping software and I did a straight line from the cabin to the, um, the end of my driveway. It's 500 meters. This took a long time. And then we finished the loft floor, which is great. The remaining 20% of the loft floor, this is going to make working on the roof much easier. Now, all of this preparatory work, it doesn't look like a lot has changed, but this very detail-oriented work, it's setting it up. And because the building's also square at 606 centimeters by 603 centimeters corner to corner, that means that I should be able to use one template and cut all my rafters, my 37, ra sorry, 34 rafters cut them all together so that should really speed it up by taking the time to build this good foundation for the rafters this week it should speed it up next week when we're actually throwing those rafters up there so by golly i'm excited to see what it's going to look like next week it's going to make it a huge change because i have the rafters i've got the plywood to put on top and i've got the tyvek waterproof barrier so once that's up that's an actual waterproof roof on the cabin so I'm so excited. Tune in next week to see if I actually get that all that material up or if I get eaten by uh, the awakening bears and pooped out as blueberry bush fertilizer. See you next week, folks.